Hello and welcome to Close Reading Classic Literature with me, Dr Octavia Cox. Today I thought I'd do a quick, fun Jane Austen video. It's an example of uh, Jane Austen in her youth and when she's really kind of playful. And if you're interested in the later Austen, so in her uh, six major novels, then I really do recommend that you read her Juvenilia, which are her younger uh, pieces of writing that she wrote when she was a teenager because they are fabulously funny and silly and you can see this young writer testing out her talents, testing out her skill and really honing her writing to make her into the writer that she is later and I'm going to unpick one small dedication today. So today I'm going to read through a youthful, playful piece of writing by Jane Austen. That is Jane Austen's alliterative letter to her cousin Cooper, that is Miss Jane Cooper, which formed a mock dedication prefacing Austen's collection of letters, which are a series of epistles mocking the conventions of 18th century epistolary fiction, which was the kind of mode of novel writing that dominated the later part of the 18th century. The collection of letters, Austen's collection of letters, are written out neatly in Jane Austen's own hand in volume the second of her juvenilia. And you can just about make out the volume the second written on the front of the notebook. Jane Austen's juvenilia were written between about 1790 and 1793. But we think that this dedication, this mock dedication letter, was probably written in the autumn of 1792, when Jane Cooper was living with the Austens. And we know that it must have been written before December 1792, as that was when Miss Cooper got married and so became Mrs Williams. So it might be that this kind of play, as you'll see, on Cooper's C, on the letter C, is, um, comes about just before Jane Cooper is about to become Jane Williams. And so Austen is particularly playing on and drawing on the fact that uh, she is cousin Cooper, for now at least. So if we're right in our thinking and it was written in the autumn of 1792, then Jane Austen was about 16 years old. So Austen's collection of letters mock traditional novelistic conventions uh, such as young women or heroines expected innocence. They are not expected to be experienced, uh, to have a lot of experience of the world they are kind of expected or that to have they have an apparent need for uh, instruction and it also deals with their sort of entrances into the world and Jane Austen is drawing on and poking fun at novels such as Fanny Burney's Evelina published in 1778 which was a kind of stonking success and really set the tone for many decades after its publication in terms of what was expected of the novel and all these things are played with it in Evelina. And you can really see these same themes. So the idea of innocence versus experience, the idea of young girls apparently needing to be instructed. Um, you can see that, for example, in the way that Mr. Collins treats the Bennett sisters when he is invited to read to them, for example. And they're, uh, you know, Austen's novels, particularly the early ones, which were written um, during this same period, which had their kind of genesis in this period in 1790s, are very much concerned with young girls' entrance into the world, with kind of coming out, leaving the home and going into the world, um, just as Evelina does. And you can really see that in, for example, the figure of Catherine Morland in Northanger Abbey. So Northanger Abbey was published after Austen died, but it was written in the 1790s during this same playful time when Austen was composing the Juvenilia. Uh, you can also see similar themes in Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility, which were also initially composed during, or first composed, during this same period. So, like I said, if you're interested in Austen, then do look at these early pieces because the, the threads run all the way through Austen's later work. The alliterative dedicatory letter establishes 
Austen's knowing tone for the rest of the collection of letters. Um, so alliteration, just to have the definition from the Oxford Dictionary of Literary Terms is the repetition of the same sounds, usually initial consonants of words or of stressed syllables uh, in any sequence of neighbouring words. So, for example, landscape lover, lord of language from Alfred Lord Tennyson. That's um, from his poem to Virgil. So it's a repetition of the same sound at the beginning of lots of words. And Austin absolutely, absolutely pushes this to the limit, um, to its kind of comic extreme in this dedicatory letter. So just to give you some family background, Miss Jane Cooper is the daughter of Mrs. Jane Cooper, who is the sister of Mrs. Austin, who is the mother of Jane Austen. So Miss Jane Cooper and Miss Jane Austen are first cousins. And just as a quick aside, in term, when we're looking at kind of the biography, so in, um, in early in spring 1783, this is when Austen was not, well, she was about seven years old. Um, so Jane Austen was born on the 16th of December 1775. So in spring 1783, she was about seven years old. And she, along with her sister and Jane Cooper, were kind of given over to a Miss Corley, a Mrs Corley, who was going to school them, be their tutor essentially, in Oxford. And James Austen, their elder brother, who was at university at the time, was around to keep a kind of eye on these three young, very young girls who had been sent off um, because the Austins at that time were taking in boy pupils for Mr. Austin to earn a bit more money. So the paying boys came in, the family girls were, set, were shipped out um, and they went to Oxford. Later in 1783, Mrs. Corley moved the three young girls to Southampton um, and she didn't let the families know about this. Um, and at Southampton, they caught typhus fever and the three of them were gravely, gravely ill. But again, Mrs. Corley didn't let the family know about this, um, didn't know kind of the, the, the peril <laughs> that they were in. But Jane Cooper, so the cousin, wrote to her mother to explain what was going on, to explain the situation. Um, the, the mothers kind of completely anxiously rushed down to Southampton to collect their, you know, gravely ill daughters uh, and took them uh, back home again. So Mrs. Cooper and Mrs. Austin, the three young girls recovered, but during this escapade, Mrs. Cooper, so Mrs. Austin's sister, caught typhus and later died as a result. So she died on the 25th of October 1783. So it's rather tragically uh, that we have Jane Cooper and Mrs Cooper to thank for Jane Austen not dying of typhus fever when she was seven years old. And now to the text itself. And on the right of the screen you can see the manuscript version of this dedicatory uh, mock mock dedication letter in Austin's own hand and what beautiful handwriting. I confess that reading this text is partially an excuse just to show you the manuscript because I think it's always fascinating to see um, the actual kind of construction of a text in the author's own hand. As I said this is a fair copy so it has been written out um, neatly but even here you can see that some additions, some changes have been made. So for example, underneath a cousin, you can just still about see that initially was written madam. So she's changed the text from madam to cousin in order to um, highlight, I think, the alliteration. So to Miss Cooper, cousin, adding to the alliteration. Conscious of the charming character which in every country 
and every clime in Christendom is cried concerning you. With caution and care I commend to your charitable criticism this clever collection of curious comments which have been carefully culled, collected and classed by your comical cousin, the author. And you can see it, so changing madam to cousin um, highlights the alliteration, as I've said, but I think it also reiterates the kind of and emphasises their relationship. It starts with cousin and it ends with cousin. So we've got to Miss Cooper, the cousin, and then we've got the cousin, the author, it's sort of neatly linking them back together in their, and sort of highlighting, as I've said, their relationship. And this is a dedicatory letter to a person, so you can see why you would highlight a kind of personal relationship, even if it is a mock dedication. Um, also, I think what's interesting here is we can sort of see that Austen is undermining um, a typical heroine. So the OTT language, which is really highlighted through the use of alliteration, exposes just how silly some contemporary accounts of heroines are. So here it's um, written that Miss Cooper is a charming character, which in every country and every clime in Christendom is cried concerning you. And the use of the C sound kind of over and over just shows how ludicrous, really, you know, it's emphasised in every and every. So you have that kind of uh, repetition that this is a the language of excess, but the alliteration also shows that and seems to be showing, it seems to me, that points like this or kind of eulogies like this to say that a charming character is called a charming character in every country, in every clime in Christendom, and not only do they think this, but they cry it concerning you. Um, that it exposes the ridiculousness of language that is often used to describe kind of perfect heroines, which, as we well know, I hope by now in across my videos, that Austen really rails against pictures of perfection. They make her sick and wicked. And she wrote that much, much later in her life. But you can see that that same impulse is here in this dedicatory letter. I also think it's just worth uh, pointing out also that she calls herself your comical cousin. And I think the, the comical side of Austen is one that's too often overlooked and is really fundamental, I think, to understanding the essence of Jane Austen, which is not the romance, but the comedy. I think if you were to, this is obviously completely presumptuous, but if you, I imagine that if you were to ask Jane Austen what she wants to be known for, it would be for the, the playful use of comedy and the kind of comedy genre and the ways in which she changes fundamental aspects of the novel um, and the, the comedy genre and that she highlights people's absurdities and their ridiculousnesses and you know, that that, as Mr. Bennett said, says in Pride and Prejudice, for what do we live but to make sport for our neighbours, to laugh at them and for them to laugh at us in their turn. And it's that sort of satire, that comedy, that playing with the ridiculousnesses of life that is essential, I think, to Austen's kind of philosophy and what she thinks is the purpose of novels, really, is to expose that side of life. Here in this dedicatory letter that's what she's putting forward that she wants to be known as. She wants to be known as your comical cousin, the author. And again, you know, she's putting herself forward as the author, the figure of the author, and she wants to be seen as comical, comical author. In Northanger Abbey, in the very opening chapter, Catherine Morland, the heroine, is described as being in training for a heroine. She read all such works as heroines must read to supply their memories with those quotations which are so serviceable and so soothing in the vicissitudes of their eventful lives. And here in the dedication, I think we see a young woman in training for an author. Jane Austen here is working up 
and building on her writerly skills. It is these kinds of exercises, essentially, that strengthen the linguistic muscles of the mind, that you set yourself a task like this, you know, how long a sentence can I write just, uh, you know, primarily using words that begin with C, how long can I make that sentence? Um, setting yourself that kind of challenge and then um, fulfilling it. And to show you just how adept Jane Austen is, I challenge you to try the same thing. Can you write one sentence, one fluent, grammatical, sensical sentence that has 24 alliterative words in it and only one repetition which as I said was added in later cousin and one half repetition collected and collection but can you can you beat Jane Austen let me know in the comments below many thanks indeed for watching remember if you like what I do here on my channel where I analyze classic literature then do subscribe and if you have enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed this quick sort of romp through a little playful text by Austen um, then do press the like button, it does help me out in YouTube's algorithm. And as I said, if you have an alliterative sentence that is longer than 24 <laughs> words long, then do leave them in the comments below, I'd love to see them.